Okay, I apologize in advance because um, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Partially out of my own lack of knowledge over this level. Um, I actually played, like, looked over this level a fair bit, but it's, I don't know, it's like the thing with these things is they're always bigger than you think that they are. Um, especially because this is level 27 of... Um, this is level 27 of Memento Mori 2, which came out um, in 1996, uh, right after Memento Mori 1, a few, like, maybe like six months or something like that. And it was, uh, once again, sort of a compilation of the best and brightest people in the Doom community at the time who were making stuff. And so it, they're still very popular today. The interesting thing, I think, about the Memento Murray levels is they were designed for co-op play. And this is one level where you can definitely see that. First of all, there's like this huge surplus of ammo in the level because it's designed to be played with multiple players. And also there are multiple pathways through the level. There, there are two main pathways that you can take and then a lot of different side route, you know, variations of routes that you can take. I'm not even sure that I took the best one, but um, I went. I could take the back way, which would get me a key much sooner, um, and maybe allow me to skip some like particularly bad things. But I wanted to take out some of the enemies here from a safe position first. And this is the the way that most people will go through the map. But but the back way is is just as interesting, really. Um, and I don't know, yeah, it's a it's a really interesting, complex map. It's by this guy named Paul Noble, who hasn't really done much in the way of Doom mapping um, since, like, really since this WAD. And um, I was, like, really obsessed with... He also did map... Uh, map. I'm going to look it up. I think it's map 5 of Memento Mori 2. And that's basically it, um, other than like a multiplayer wad that um, that he made. I forget what it's called. I think it's called Dojo, yeah, Dojo Deathmatch, Dojo DM. Um, I'm typing this in the Google search very haphazardly. So you can tell I'm also quite tired. Memento Mori 2. Oh yes, teleporting. Oh, I love these teleporting. Um, Hell Knights, because um, normally this would be a pretty easy confrontation, but the fact that they are teleporting back and forth, um, I'm sure there's some pattern to it. I think they're teleporting to other like little stations, but because they're teleporting back and forth, it makes their sort of path unpredictable, and it makes that fight actually a lot harder than it would be otherwise. So it's a very creative use of like the monster teleports, which I really like. Especially because it's like right in this entrance area. It's kind of welcoming you into this very strange abstract series of maps. I love that this set puts the city maps last. I think that's an excellent decision. They put the hell maps first and the city maps towards the end because I really like these kind of really winding complex city maps. Um, and I really like the simpler uh, hell maps that just focus on like one or two concepts and usually it's the you know the converse so like this I think allows the people who are making it to do something kind of different with it um, and yeah I don't know like the thing that I love about this level is this is so bizarre like partly probably designed because it's designed around the non-linearity um, you really don't see levels designed like this anymore they're just the, the different paths that you can take. This is a sort of weird portal room that Kakadim has emerged from that you can go on either side of. And this is the big room where, like, the central silo room, which has annoying as hell um, pain elementals that often I try to use the uh, invulnerability sphere to kill. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess you will see me actually do that because I'm going to die. I am playing this on UV uh, Ultraviolence instead of Hurt Me Plenty, which was probably a bad call, honestly. Um, it's just Memento Mori is an older wad. It's not as hard. But this And this map, you know, because there's such a surplus of ammo, I, um, I kind of figured, oh, I'll be able to get through it fine. But not really. Like, especially this room is really nasty just because of all the pain elementals. 
uh, just spawns in Lost Souls really, really fast. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But I, I love this the setting of that area. There are a few different ways to approach that area. I'm going the most direct way, but I can go to the portal to the on the very left side. There's a path to a teleporter that'll send me to the... Or no, I think it's a lift. It'll send me to a back end that'll, uh, where I can enter into this room. And there's a secret from completely the other side of the level, which you would not even think is connected to this part of the level. It's sort of, it's the, the yellow key area. This is the um, opening up the blue key door, which I, I didn't need to go here first, but I went here because of the Lost Souls. I just wanted to take care of that really annoying pain elemental thing first. But, um, but yeah, you can come in here through a secret and drop down. Um, and if you come in from the other side of the map, which I like doing just to break the flow, um, and and get the secret, it kind of like messes things up because then you have to take care of the pain elementals. Otherwise, they'll just start spawning in a bunch of lost souls. And it can get really, really annoying and hard to deal with. So yeah, I'm raising up the silos. I'm not sure what actual effect that has other than, um, you know, a narrative effect. Um, I'm going to actually look up the description of this map because each of these maps had stories behind them and it's always like oh it's your job to infiltrate the base marine They're usually pretty stupid but but this one really like i don't know it feels like someone made this very complex like multifaceted uh self-contained world and you can and it doesn't feel like a disjointed bunch of rooms like a lot of Doom's levels do like there are a bunch of different ideas going on but they don't feel disjointed it feels like it's all really interesting and part of a strange like whole um, yeah there's some weird puzzly stuff with the switch and like the way that that door opened and this is like probably the most bullshit I'm coming up on probably the most bullshit encounter of the level um, which is the this lift that goes drops straight down into a bunch of enemies that are really difficult to take care of uh, I'm using the panic weapon plasma gun. There's also the uh, the other thing that makes this room bullshit is the um, to the right. There's a required area that you have to go to. Um, oh yeah, okay. I'm coming outside of the other side of this portal. I'm not sure how to get this the middle one. There's an invulnerability sphere. Maybe I got it at some point, um, and I just didn't know it. But in any case, um, not quite sure how to get it. I got, I think I ended up getting five out of seven secrets or something like that. So I got a lot of them, but the, one of the big ones is in this room with the cyber demon, which I love that there's just a random cyber demon at the end of that hallway, but then uh, crushers will come if you wait long enough and don't just try to kill it. And it'll just crush that thing. <laughs> it like kind of doesn't, doesn't even matter. Because the difficulty in this map is, is not really about like number of enemies or whatever. It's mostly about trickiness. Um, the monster count isn't very high, and like you get a lot of ammo. Um, presumably you get less on uh, co-op, but it's really not about that so much as like the the environments and how they sort of trap you um, and navigating that stuff. So, which is the kind of difficulty I usually like. I like the fact that. It's kind of has the opposite problem of Equinox, which has a lot of big confrontations, but um, they can feel kind of empty and bland sometimes. But and there's a but there's a shortage of ammo to handle them with. Um, whereas this is like a lot of like different little um, sort of creative encounters that you're having that you have plenty of ammo to handle. But, um, you know, th there's, there's never, like, any really big moment where you can let the monsters in fight in this map, for the most part. I mean, there's a few, but... Oh, I love this. Um, this is just a side area, as far as I know. There's a secret here that you can open up here, which is nice, because I do need that armor. But if you just sit there, a cacodemon will just, like, waft out of this <laughs> lift. Presumably did it to, like, have you know, have it be a monster that's just like, where the fuck did that thing come from? 
But I like if you just sit there and wait long enough and it just pops out. There's just a lot of really creative and thoughtful stuff done in this map. Um, okay, I'm gonna read this. This mission imperative is imperative to the success of Operation Memento Mori 2. This missile base which you'll be dropped into has fallen into the hands of the enemy. And they don't know what they've got, but we do. The site is a guidance array and a missile launch center. I think you're supposed to infiltrate and like launch the missiles, basically. Um, or destroy the... I'm not going to read the whole thing, because it's... <laughs> but, like... The interesting thing is that the story text for this actually does mesh pretty well with like the level that's designed. There's a lot of narrative stuff being reflected in this level, which is part of the reason I love it. In addition to the like non-linearity, or at least the the different variety of different paths, um, this room has a really interesting architecture. It's not quite like orthogonal in any way. Um, not quite symmetrical and there's just like the 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 way that the the outside areas are structured with those little towers is at like these odd angles and it does a lot with very little like it uses that in a way that like creates a kind of interesting effect but yeah this is this feels almost more cohesive like story wise than anything in doom proper but that i have no problem with that <laughs> um but yeah, the, the name of this designer is Paul Noble, and he did map five of Memento Mori 2 called Rites of Pas Passage, which is a very strange level, sort of a hell level. Um, and that was the first thing I saw, and I was like, wow, this is really bizarre. You kind of like start off with this view of, um, oh yeah, okay, I activated the crusher, so the cyber demon is dead. I don't know which of the piles of blood he is, but he's one of just the indistinct... <laughs> same size pile of blood which I find really funny that he's the same size as the zombie men but there's only one sprite for this um but yeah here's a big secret that sends you to an island that's completely distinct from the rest of the map which I really like um yeah, I love those towers inside but yeah I was um rites of passage begins with like a really strange like you into this like room across from you it's like this kind of weird upside down staircase thing and there's, there's a lot of really strange sort of flow to that map um, structures that don't normally work in the way they're not designed in the way that people would kind of design anything now but they're really interesting to me some people would say that that map is more broken and it uses a lot of these like ugly custom textures but somehow it makes it work which i don't know it's it's Really the thing with Doom is <laughs> it really is an all in how you use it more than anything else. Um, more than like how pretty the textures are, how cohesive it really is. Um, but yeah, I was really obsessed with these two maps in particular just because of how like, how designed they feel, how much it feels like the kind of like, you know, feels like kind of like the world the, the worlds that you dream of as a kid when you're drawing a map and you have these really complex plots um it feels like a pretty uh, good realization of those kinds of ideas um whereas you know a game like doom in itself is like this really interesting thing but maybe isn't anything necessarily particularly cohesive a lot of games from back then suffer in that way but yeah i was convinced that he was this visual artist named paul noble who did this uh, series of like illustrations i think it's called like actually I'll, I'll look it up oh there's not not much to say about this outdoor area it's fairly indistinct noble artist because um, I was searching for Paul Noble and I saw a Paul Noble artist and he has these very um, bizarre series of uh, illustrations about a fake town. Um, killing revenants. That, that 
tech that gray brick texture is pretty ugly by the way but i don't know whatever it seems to work okay um Nobson newton is the name of the town and yeah all these really bizarre illustrations that are all these little complex little pieces and you know thinking about like how suriac harris for example is a very famous video artist um, some of his videos are kind of very architectural in some ways and these these are very architectural and very like little pieces I was like thinking oh maybe this is the same person it's not the same person no <laughs> like um, he did post I found a post of his on Doom World and it said that he was just working as like a software engineer which is sad because like you know this <laughs> the game industry probably could have used this guy's talents I, I'm I don't know but it, it's weird like I was talking to somebody else who is part of the Doom community about how I have, like, I'll get very obsessed with specific des uh, designers or artists who might have only done a few maps, but they just embody something completely different from the norm for me that, that is very just, like, complete. And, and this is one of, like, the big examples for this. This is honestly one of my favorite Doom maps. Um, even though it's, you know, from 1996. I don't know, people will talk disparagingly in the Doom community about, like, like, wow, it's amazing that they did all this in 1995 or 1996. And, yeah, I mean, some of it has to do with, like, just, like, technological limits. But as far as, like, ideas, there's so many ideas going on in this map. So many more ideas than any... Oh, yeah, okay, this is the secret that I love, because it just cuts right through that, um, that silo area. And it's the only connection, as far as I know, into this part of the... Maybe that's not true, actually. Um, but the, those two halves are not very connected. Like, I could have gone this back way f straight from the beginning. I love these. I love it whenever anyone uses textures as doors, as long as they're made, like, distinct. Um, but anyway. Oh, yeah, and the super shotgun is in here. It's one of the things where you can tell that this was obviously made for co-op play. But yeah, a lot of people would be like, oh, this is good for 1996. And, like, but as far as, like, you know, the, the detail level or whatever, some of the technical stuff might be inferior. But as far as, like, the amount of game design ideas, it's just way more going on in here than in most modern maps that I play. And most modern maps have a lot of, like, bloat in them. They have the problem where you do one thing and then you do it three more times and it's the same kind of combat you're fighting monsters in the same way it might be challenging but it's the same kind of uh i say this as like there's a place where you just get stuck yeah this obviously should have been bait this should have been tested because it's pretty easy to get stuck here i had to just jump which is not supposed to be a, a thing but anyway uh so yeah obviously it should have been tested not going to make excuses for that. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, it's the same kind of encounters a lot of the time. And um, you're doing it over and over again in the same kind of variations. And I know some people just really like the combat for Doom and they just really want to be challenged in that way. I don't find that particularly challenging. Um, it's more about just like, reflexes and playing it you know a billion times until you like are good at dealing with the monster set like that's not that's the kind of challenge that people seem to be really interested in in, in games a lot of the time like the thing with a game like spelunky just learning all the details of the system and like managing them perfectly and stuff but it's just a boring sort of challenge to me um when there are so many tools in the Doom engine, even if they're fairly basic, just within level design or geometry or enemy placement, um, anything like that, um, where you can you can actually be really challenging, and like both maybe both difficulty wise and uh, you know narrative wise or like just like a variety a surprising variety of encounters. Like, it's never surprising when you pick up a key and a bunch of monsters spawn it anymore. Like, why does anybody need to do that anymore unless it, like, makes sense in context? There really is no reason to do those, like, 
to sit back on those same Doom cliches. Like, I, I know people just want to make something that feels like something that they played back then, but it's just like, it doesn't even make sense to have it anymore. It was barely surprising at the time. And now when you see it, it's just so expected that it's really bizarre, like that everyone just kind of does and repeats these things, even though they make no sense. Oh, I love this silo area. This is one of my favorite rooms. How fast the lift moves down is just perfect. Um, I don't like the amount of pain elementals in this map, but they kind of serve an interesting purpose because you really are panicking to kill them as fast as possible. They're a monster that doesn't appear a lot in the modern, you know, Doom, because people hate them. Rightfully so, they suck. But they do serve kind of an interesting purpose, even though they're annoying in this map, especially. But yeah, so many game design decisions that people make in Doom maps that just make no sense. Just lots of repetition, lots of really, really boring stuff. And it makes me, you know, be like, okay, it's just a Doom modding community, like whatever, you know, people doing it because they want to have fun. Like they're not thinking about these things deeply. And then, you know, every once in a while, I'll find something that like has so many ideas going on and it doesn't do this stuff. And, you know, even if it's just like scattered levels or uh, from from megawatts with a bunch of different authors, I just going up and down just to for fun, I guess. Um, or it's like, um, you know, parts of levels, maybe even just things that are more inspired and bizarre and really like there's not quite anything out there just because so many people were experimenting with doom just the the sheer numbers and the fact that like it does give you a lot of uh variety of things that you can do within that like base of combat which is why i keep coming back and saying like well if nothing else i would like to pick out the things that i think are the most interesting and aren't doing this like repetitive shit and um, highlight them. So yeah, I don't know. As far as like playing through, there are a lot of interesting levels in Memento Mori, and then there are some just uh, Memento Mori and Memento Mori too, too. And then there's some just like really weird bullshit stuff. And um, there's some stuff that feels like artistically a lot more fully realized than other stuff. It's an interesting set to play through, but um, you know, it like as far as like, it's still in the era of like weird ideas being tried out but it's not in the era of like modern detail so i think a lot of people have trouble with that and there is definitely an inconsistency where you know something that is trying to have the sort of modern standards of combat um and fails at it like quite obviously is put up against something like this which is bizarre and there's nothing quite quite like this um and you can't really get that in modern wads. So, so yeah, that's the frustrating thing. Um, I had a few like other maps that I was potentially thinking of, like for Memento Mori and Memento Mori 2. I actually really like, I think it's the fourth map of um, Memento Mori 2, it's called. Uh, let me look. It's called Radamahada. <laughs> Uh, by uh, Florian Helmberger. It's a fairly like straightforward map, but it's like one where uh, it's again designed specifically for co-op. And I, I like that. Maybe the reason why the set is just so different, in addition to like flipping the the cliche about like hell levels being at the end. I think I, by the way, I think I made a post in like the Doom forum and someone's like, it just doesn't, just makes the most sense for things to be going crazy and it to be hellish at the end. It's like, wow, like, I don't know. That's, that's the kind of attitude that I will never understand as far as like, it just makes sense for things to be the same the whole time. Like, why would you ever change it ever? But <laughs> anyway, um, it's, it's a fairly straightforward level. You just start out and there are four different places you can drop down into, not like teleporting, you just drop down into them. 
and it's very obviously designed for um, for co-op. But I think at the beginning you can only drop to two of them, and then once you go through, um, you can you can drop down to all four and go in any order you like. And all, basically, all you're doing is just uh, lift, uh, you know, uh, putting up a lift that um, that's in that first room where all the first four areas are, and you. Um, And you just like, uh, and then and then that's just where you exit. But it's a very nice like short map. It has some really interesting sort of hellish areas, but it's contained within like a concept where you feel like you know you're making progress. I think that's the thing, just like feeling like there's some sort of progress being made. Um, whereas a lot of modern maps, oftentimes there's no real sense of like how long a thing is, you're just kind of playing and playing and playing and playing. And um, so it, it's kind of hard to feel like a sense of progress. And it's hard to like feel a connection to the environment because the elements in the environment aren't really interacting with each other very much. It's all like oftentimes just like set dressing. Um, to like set pieces for like fights you know that you're having you're having big like encounters and there's this pretty environment but you're not really interacting with the environment it, either in your combat like the way that you're you know it limits sort of the way that you could fight or in the way that like you're interacting with like switches or, or things like that or lifts or you know like using those things to your advantage that's like really undersold I feel like um, just because, I don't know, there's some, something about the sort of epic grandiosity that is what a lot of people like and what a lot of people go for. It's like, you know, the wankiest guitar solo or whatever. That's really what it's about, but for a lot of people. But yeah, it's, it, it's frustrating. I, I'm glad that I was watching a stream recently. Um, it was Alfonso and... Um, uh, who is the head of uh, one of the project leads for the Doom 2 the way it did, and uh, Android, who's a, a Russian Doom player, and they're talking about um, just playing through um, Doom 2 the way it did, and just talking about like what went into the construction in it and what what went into specific styles. Um, and and Alfonso was saying like, well, you know, there's so many Doom maps out there, so many different kinds of things. So many things that are like experimental, um, or or just like um, you know, or you know, if you want slaughter maps, you you can have that. If you want like art, weird arty maps, that there's like probably quite a few out there. If you want you know more like classic style, whatever, uh, don't deviate too much from that. You can find that, and that is true in a lot of ways. Um, and because that community is so, is so there's enough history there for it to be fairly robust. And that's the nice thing about it. Um, I don't think it's necessarily different from any other modding community, um, but it's something that I know, and it's something that I know enough to have looked for things and found some interesting things. And I also think Doom, just at a basic level, gets so many things right as a game. I don't know, I was talking to a friend about like like comparing doom with sonic as being two games with like a pretty obsessive bizarre fan base um and and two games from around the same time in the 90s that rely very much on speed and like just extremity and i think that those are games that like feel very much like video games more than anything else like Sonic you can't really get that sort of feeling through anything else you can't get that feeling of speed through anything else and this there's really nothing like that even remotely comes close to the feeling of like outside of a game of like playing a doom a doom map and um that's why I think they just keep coming back, and there's there's this fascination with with both of those games, um, more so than like in a game like Mist, which is essentially a slideshow and a very like art, um, 
maybe more interesting in terms of setting or maybe closer to what I'd want to see, but but less of a like, um, I'm so glad that I didn't pick those up before because I really needed them there. Um, but just less distinctive as far as like the, the game is concerned. And, you know, I guess the hope is to marry like the 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 kind of play with Doom or Sonic in with like really interesting aesthetics. Although I think like the Sonic Two <laughs> or Sonic Three, even Sonic One, uh, those first few games like have really interesting, really pretty art in them. Um, like especially like the background and s s how detailed some of the sprites are and stuff like that. They're pretty beautiful. Um, I'm going to struggle for a few minutes trying to figure out where to go because I didn't, like, I rehearsed the beginning of this map. So at the beginning, like, I'm being very, like, I don't know, um, measured with where I'm going and stuff like that. And But I never played enough into this map to, like, you know, really rehearse playing through all of it. So I ended up dying more and, like, here I just like, oh, I don't know where I'm fucking going and just feeling like, oh, I'm gonna have to like record this let's play over again. And then I just like looked at the map and I figured it out. And it is like, there's a kind of bullshit passage over the right that I alluded to earlier. I just passed through it actually about a minute ago. You just have to, it's one of those things where the lift doesn't stop there. You have to like be moving in that direction in order to get off. And I don't know, it's one of the things about quirks about do maps or whatever that you have to be aware of um, but at least there's an auto map which makes it infinitely easier to deal with but yeah this, this map there's just so many different themed sections and they all feel like you know even the outside I really like but the outside could be really good and you know inside the map could feel bland but every like room has his own character. Some rooms, like, even just the room itself, like, even if there's nothing in there, just has, like, this character or mood of it that is conveying something interesting. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the map after this is also pretty interesting. It's called Corporate Hell. Um, and I'm going to be playing through a map, uh, definitely in Doom Mixtape later, that's inspired by that map. Um, and some of the city maps in Memento Mori too. But I like the the com the complex sort of city things. It it it's really these maps are really doing things that the Doom Two city maps really didn't do. Like I think I really like the industrial zone uh, map fifteen of Doom Two, but it's not. Um, I'd say it's still not as like consistent. Um, and and a lot of the Doom. A lot of those maps feel very hodgepodge, so some of the things that were inspired by it, like taking that sort of feeling of going into these different rooms or areas that have different characters into them and actually making it into something fairly cohesive is really nice. It is really improving upon D Doom in a lot of ways. Like, um, I was also listening to an interview with uh, Syriac Harris um, on the like the Doom Doom 2 uh, uh, podcast uh, blog uh, that's done by Alfonso and Tarnsman and some of those other people um, from like the the Doom Doom the way it did project and Doom Two the way it did and back to Saturn X and stuff and um, he was just saying that like uh, he hadn't really heard much about Doom um, but he had always like Doom modding and the the sort of scenes that were but he'd always like really enjoyed playing Doom and like. He was exposed to it, I don't know, through some ends. Like, I can't remember what he said specifically, but he was really, like, his perception was just going to be, like, um, you know, was really worried that, like, nothing was really going to, like, improve on the gameplay or whatever. And he sort of found out, like, that there's actually a lot of stuff that actually does improve upon the originals and takes it in an interesting new direction. And, uh, and that's the point where he sort of started getting into Doom modding. It's interesting just to see the perspective of someone who has like a lot of uh, different life in the in the like video art world, um, and you know probably never considered himself like be, being really seriously involved. Um, 
on something like this. I don't know. I've, I've, I haven't been like so blown away by some of his maps as other people. I think that they're they're very pretty. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I have to give going down a bit of more of a chance. That's his like recent megawatt because there's interesting ideas in it. Definitely. Um, I just like stuff that's. I don't know. There's a particular kind of combat in Doom that can get boring to me unless it's mixed up. But yeah, I finally reached the end of this map. This is the end of the silos. Oh man. But yeah, that's one of my favorite Doom maps maybe ever. Um, not, you know, maybe aesthetically it's interesting, maybe not the best. It was made in 1996, but just in terms of the layout, in terms of the different ways that you can approach it, it just never gets old to me, and it, it really contains a lot of the best of what I find about Doom stuff, even, you know, with some bullshit encounters and stuff like that. It's just, it's, it's interesting, and it's fun, and yeah, I don't know. That's what I like when people can do that really well. It's, it's really great to see. Yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.